and welcome to Media Week. Ahead, Seven agrees to sell its stake in Consolidated Media to News Limited after the competition regulator blocked its own takeover ambitions. Radio Furor will be looking at Macquarie Radio's stand against the anti Alan Jones social media campaign. And we'll be joined by Lisa Hudson from Fairfax Metro Media to look at the growing food category. But first, to our top story, News Limited is clear to take over subscription TV shareholder Consolidated Media after Seven was forced to abandon its own takeover ambitions by the ACCC. The ACCC ruling that any Seven takeover of Cons Media would substantially lessen competition in the free-to-air TV market, particularly when it comes to sports rights. So Seven says it will now sell that stake, 25% stake in Cons Media to News Limited. Let's get analysis on what this means for the sector. Our co-host James Manning, the editor and publisher of Media Week, is here. James, just firstly, what did the ACCC say today about the seven proposal to, to take over Cons Media? Yeah, it was probably no surprise. I think um, last month they expressed some doubts, you know, they wanted, I think they got some extra time. They said, look, we're going to be looking at this very carefully. We do have some cons uh, concerns about uh, competition in the sector and, and they, that, that, that ended up being the case uh, basically because Seven is such a, uh, a player in free-to-air TV and if um, Seven was able to get a, a real good grip on the subscription TV, Thor would give them an unfair competitive advantage, particularly in sports rights. So being a player in subscription and free-to-air means they could mount joint offers and maybe tie up a lot of sports rights. Um, not giving other freeware players uh, a chance to bid for them. That was the, the basis of it all. Kerry Stokes has obviously had uh, interest and, and ambitions in the subscription TV sector though for a long time and he's built up this state to 25% in consolidated media. Obviously it's lucrative, it's a growing area of the market too. Did he have any other option now after this ACCC ruling other than to um, support the News Limited takeover bid? Um. Probably, I guess he could have hung on, but then to what end, you know, keep, keep his shareholding. But, you know, he's, he's going to get a, a substantial payday, like half a billion dollars roughly, to get out. I mean, he invested a lot to get in in the first place. Hadn't been able to run the numbers on exactly what it was. But half a billion dollars is, is going to be pretty attractive. Sure, he's been, look, I mean, when subscription TV first launched, I think uh, AFL was on C7, if, you know, I used to watch it on C7. Of course, that was a, a 7 uh, connected there. Um, on, on Optus Vision, I think it was back then. Um, there was that long case about the C7 versus News Limited, you know, a lot of animosity between those two sides there. Then he got onto the register at Consolidated Media. I mean, look, I don't pretend to know what's happening behind the scenes, but it looks like he's almost putting up his hand saying, look, OK, I'll back out of this for, for the time being, you know, I'll take the cash, you know, and you guys can get on with it. So what does it mean now? So News Limited, it, it's obviously got ACCC approval, it's got FERB approval to, to buy Cons Media. So, so what sort of yeah, happens well, next? I think there's a shareholder vote coming up at the end of this month, October 31, and then they'll just go through the regulatory steps that they have to get to, to, to get over it. You know, then they'll emerge. Um, News will have a 50% uh, shareholding in Foxtel, sitting alongside uh, Telstra. I think News also has sort of management rights, so it's uh, well positioned there. They'll like 100% of Fox Sports. And uh, importantly, too, at uh, news is being run by Kim Williams, a person with deep understanding of the subscription TV business, you know, uh, 10 years sort of running Foxtel, knows it intimately, and it'll be well positioned to sort of maximise the synergies between uh, all the news limited at print and digital assets and what they could be doing to leverage um, their, their business best with the, uh, the television assets they'll, they'll be controlling and running. Um, is it a big change for the industry, do you think, overall? Uh, what will it mean for the viewer at home? Mm -hmm. Uh, maybe not a lot, you know. Um, there again, there might be some sort of, you know, uh, smart things that'll that'll work between the the newspapers and and the Fox Sports, for instance. But uh, off the top of your head, I, I can't think of a lot that's going to change for the viewer at home. Okay. Um. I guess too, on, on the other side of the coin as well, it's it's kind of history making as well, isn't it? With James Packer, obviously the the Packers long uh, running ties to um, the, the media sector in Australia. Now James Packer, once uh, this deal is done, he'll be left with. Uh, just a small stake in, in 10, really. Yeah, that's it. Um, um, for the time being, I guess, because yeah. you never know. <laughs> that's the, it. You know, the market keeps being as tough as it is now. There could be buying opportunities around the corner, you know, into next year. Hopefully that won't be the case and there'll be some sort of uh, improvement in the sector. But, yeah, he, he will be out. Um, 
And he, but he's, he's detailed before why he wanted. He said, look, he's, he likes lots of these people he's supposed to be competing against. He finds it hard to sort of go up against them. So he, he is, I don't think he's nostalgic about uh, exiting from the media business. All right. And, of course, focusing on that casino, um, the casino game. Yeah, Just uh, as well, another piece of news um, with Foxtel. And uh, we've heard that it's going to be taking over the PMP channels, Showtime and, and Showcase. What, yeah. what will this mean? Yeah. Well, uh, again, that will mean... Um, some better synergies perhaps within the Foxtel group. I mean, we see Foxtel took control of the XYZ channels after they took over um, uh, Ozstar. So that was, you know, the lifestyle channels, uh, the music channels, Max, uh, uh, Channel V. So that's been sort of absorbed within Foxtel. Now they'll take those movie channels in-house. There might be some cost savings there for them, perhaps. You know, they won't be going through a third party, I guess. Movie offering still quite, you know, crucial to the subscription TV offering. Perhaps not as much as they once were. So there was, you know, some long-term contracts that uh, I think was costing them probably a fair bit of money. So will they, you know, there could be some savings there. Because a lot of those, you know, a lot of the, the premium TV offerings and now a lot of the specially produced TV drama that gets a first run. Of course, there's so many other opportunities to view movies these days on lots of different platforms that they're just not quite rating as, as much as they used to. Um, just on to Nine, and we know, of course, obviously, James Packer sold out um, a while ago now from, from Nine Entertainment, but um, we've been seeing those talks ongoing uh, between Nine and the lenders to, to try and uh, avoid receivership and, and refinance the, the company. Any thoughts yet? Any update on, on what's well, happening? Well, going from what's happened this week so far, um, uh, Peter Bush and um, David Gingell, representing Nine Entertainment, put a restructure plan, I think, to Goldman Sachs earlier in the week. The, I think the kicker was, look, we need to try and sort this out quickly, you know. There's, there'll be no further negotiation. This is what we think uh, was less, I think, perhaps, than Goldman Sachs were expecting. But they came back and said, yeah, look, we, we could probably live with that. We might like something a bit better, but if this gets this deal moving on, OK. So now they've got uh, some other lenders, I think Apollo and Oak Tree, some other um, investors. It's got a, there seems to be some doubt that they might accept this. And then again, is that sort of just a position they're going to take? You know, when it gets to the crunch, will they be able to nut out a deal with them too? So it'll be interesting to see. Um, so both sort of pretty smart investors. Uh, some of them got some interesting assets around the world in media too. So look, they'll, they'll probably everyone will want to move on. It's interesting this morning, um, Ross Green was, was explaining all this to viewers at the Today Show. He said, look, we don't normally talk about in-house stuff on Nine, but so you get a sense, it's sort of, we're getting close to the uh, the end of all this when uh, when's Nine out there telling their viewers about sort of what's going on. Yeah, um, just saying, I guess with Nine, there's been some executive moves this week and we've seen Neil Breen, Sunday Telegraph, editor appointed EP of the Today Show. Yeah, look, at Neil Breen, we've talked to him before about leaving the biggest selling newspaper in Australia. It looked like he was either going to Fox Sports or to Nine. The, 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 the sort of favourite one was Fox Sports. Most people seem to think he might end up there, but that wasn't to be the case. He's gone to Nine, executive producer of the Today Show. Uh, the current producer, Tom Malone, is actually in New York this week with the program, so a little farewell trip for him, perhaps, I guess. Um, He's heading over to executive produce 60 Minutes, uh, executive producer of 60 Minutes, moving on to a general production role within mine. Hamish Thompson. Hamish, yeah. Okay. Um, just turning to radio now, and uh, this obviously uh, an interesting story, something we were following last week, of course, and that decision by Macquarie Radio this week to go commercial free on Alan Jones' breakfast show on 2GB. That came after a social media campaign targeting 2GB advertisers, following Jones's comments about the Prime Minister and her father. Well, for more, her late father. Well, for more on this, uh, James, I wanted to ask you, I mean, going commercial free, very brave move. Uh, I guess, do you think they were pushed to that point, Macquarie? And, I mean, how long can they, they survive by doing this? Yeah, well, um, they'd like to be doing this for as little as possible, of course. I mean, it's all about breakfast radio, I and mean, it's the real driver of the, the revenue for the station. Well, I mean, Macquarie's done a pretty good job, maybe better than most of you know, maximising revenue from all sort of other parts of the day and on weekends, but they certainly, it's all about breakfast. Um, they were sort of, yeah, definitely backed into this corner. They thought this was the best thing to go to try and defuse the situation. I think it probably has worked a little bit. I think the only other thing they could have done and it was a bit late to do it when they didn't do it straight away was maybe take Jones off air for a little while and sort of that would have sort of quietened things down too. But now they can, look, they could go out and I presume they are and if 
not they should have been, but going out to all the advertisers, telling them what's going on, keeping them filled in. A uh, few of them were disgruntled this week, so presumably they've all sort of made overtures to them, said, look, they'll be regrouping for a day when they'll come back on air. I don't think they'll make a big song and dance about it. I don't think they'll send out a press release. They'll just ease back into it. Ads will suddenly be back on. Look, it'll flare up a little bit at, again, but then, you know, I think it'll slowly get back perhaps to business as usual. We did see, of course, some pretty stark comments from the Macquarie Radio chairman, Russell State. I think Russell Tate, he called the campaign, what, 21st century censorship via cyber bullying. But now he has been, as you say, out there meeting with some of the online He's activists. He's even talked to some of the people, I think, some of the sort of online agitators about, because that... Uh, Tate was particularly worried about sort of campaigns that were affecting the advertisers who, who in his eyes hadn't really done anything, you know, they weren't sort of connected at all. Some people would argue that, but it's a, it's a different argument, I guess. But, but so, yeah, the, the people said, yeah, look, we, we, we'll stop sort of campaigning, we'll stop emailing, stop harassing the advertisers, um, and I think that sort of helped both parties. Interesting, just a side story as well, 2GB, the, the, um, David Pember, the, uh, the, the former Daily Telegraph editor, um, was told he wasn't welcome on 2GB after some of the... Yeah, he wrote a fairly wrote. stinging column, look, sort of, you know, against what Jones said and saying, look, you know, it was a bit outrageous and all this. And, yeah, TGB didn't react well to that. And he was told, you know, in certain terms, look, we, uh, we won't be having you back on the station. Uh, won't affect his pay packet very well because he sort of detailed in his column he was just a contributor but completely unpaid. Um, also, of course, this all coming as we have the, uh, the National Radio Conference, uh, annual conference getting underway uh, tomorrow. Um, is there a sense that it may be certainly something that's going to be oh, talked yeah, about look, there? Be, be talked about in the, in the corridors definitely and it'll be, it'll be talked about sort of in some of the forums too. We spoke to Joan Warner, the Chief Executive this week, she said look she hopes this one sort of subject doesn't in turn hijack the conference you know and, and she said look they have no official position on it because it happened off air. <laughs> I think she's quite happy about that but it will be talked about. I think Malcolm Turnbull's talking in the morning. I'm sure he'll address some of the, perhaps the ramifications. There's a, a um, a session in the afternoon on social media with some interesting participants. You think that'll be standing room only for, for people to get a grips with, you know, how perhaps their station should be reacting to, to all this sort of stuff. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you're going to be speaking as well with uh, a couple of the, the big um, CEOs as well. of, of Yeah, we've got a Radio session company. around lunchtime, Media Week Live is the grand title. And uh, <laughs> Kieran Davis from uh, ARN and uh, Kathy uh, from uh, DMG Radio. Yeah. They'll both be talking and we'll sort of be getting some interesting stuff from them, we hope. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, just looking at some of the other news too from the radio sector this week, um, and we've seen those radio rights negotiations for the NRL. Some progress there? Any kind of result yet? No. We, we, the, uh, we know, I think, uh, Fairfax Radio is trying to get back in. They haven't had radio rights for probably at least a decade, I would have thought, back in the day when Ray Hadley was there. Then he, he left to uh, 2GB and they took it over. I think at the time... Uh, to, to UE was, was happy to sort of, you know, they weren't paying a lot, but it was a it was a cost saving for them. I think they'd like to get back into that, uh, maybe write some revenue around it. I think they've partnered with Bill Corrales to put forward a proposal. I'm not sure if they were hoping for exclusive. I don't think that'll happen. But if they could get back in there something, the existing rights holders, are, of course, uh, 2GB, uh, I think have exclusive by Friday night, Saturday, and Sunday afternoon, I think, exclusive radio, apart from uh, exclusive commercial radio, uh, ABC, of course, have, have rights as well to everything, and uh, Triple M have rights to uh, the Monday night game. Um, just uh, some other news as well. Peter Brennan quitting 2UE as content director. Yeah, I think he's been thinking about his future there for a while, gone through some massive change at the mm -hmm. station, so he's, he's come to uh, the management said, yeah, look, um, I think I'll move on, look for something else. So he's working till the end of the year. And uh, the station said, look, we'll go on a bit of a global search for a new content director. We'll really uh, throw out the, um, the net wide, see who, see who, who we could come up with. Because, you know, in their, they're in this fight against uh, 2GB and maybe they're making some inroads at the moment if, if um, some of the viewers have turned away from GB, perhaps. All right. Um, we'll uh, leave there. Obviously, lots going on in the radio sector. It'll be very interesting to see next sure. week what happens at the, the conference as well, of course. And um, we're just going to take a very quick break on Media Week. After that, we're going to have a look at that growing and competitive food category. Lisa Hudson from Fairfax Metro Media.